Well, I'm back in San Antonio, Texas. What a month I've had. It was actually on this day a month ago that I left Myrtle Beach, uh, South Carolina, and I drove here to San Antonio and uh, put my stuff in storage. Then I went up to visit my son in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, that was an interesting experience in itself, as you know if you read my Facebook post, what happened to me. Well, then I came back here to San Antonio uh, with the real intent purpose of finding a place to live. And I visited some 30 plus apartment complexes all across San Antonio. I had one place all locked up, but then a strange thing happened. I want to thank you for your prayers. I was just getting ready to sign on the dotted line when I got a phone call. But let me bring you up to that point. What happened was this particular apartment I found, uh, they require that uh, after my application was approved and everything, they require that before they will give you the lease, they need a CPS number uh, that's for your electric bill. So I called up the electric company and asked them for a number and, and they told me before they could give me a number, I had to present to them my lease. But the leasing agent wouldn't release the lease until I gave them my CPS numbers. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. CPS didn't want to give me a number. The leasing apartment complex didn't want to give me the lease unless I had one. So I was on the phone for about two hours. Finally, CPS said, look, Mr. Martinez, your credit history is perfect. We're going to waive any deposit you have. you got to come down here and prove you really are who you say you are. <laughs> and I said, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to bring? You need to bring two forms of ID. Well, on me, I only had my driver's license. So there goes another hour. They finally said, okay, bring your driver's license. I told them I had taken pictures of my birth certificate that was on my phone. Bring it on down here and we'll get it you squared away. So I go down there and I talk to a face. You don't even meet a person. You talk to somebody kind of like this. And uh, they never even asked me for my ID. They gave me my CPS number, which was my old one. I go back to the apartment complex. They now have my CPS number. And I told them that I would like to move in by Friday. Oh, Mr. Martinez, we can't move you in by Friday because we're busy. Well, what about Saturday? No, Saturday isn't going to work either. Well, what about Monday? No, we got three move-ins then. I'll tell you what, you can move in on Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. So I call CPS, tell them, turn my electricity on on Tuesday. Now I got to call AT&T to make sure I have Wi-Fi so I can do this sort of thing. So I asked them, what time can I move in on Tuesday? And they said at noon. So I called AT&T and they gave me some different time frames that they could come out and... Uh, wire up or do whatever it is they do to get you hooked up and they asked me what time they could come and I says well come at 12 and uh, they had a, a set apart time from 12 to 2 and all so I made all that arrangement so forth fine I went home expecting to um, get all moved in on Tuesday Sunday evening I get an email from the apartment complex telling me that I couldn't move in on Tuesday now until 1.30 and they, maybe not even then we got to complete a portal and all this other stuff process. Well I told them I said I already called AT&T and told them and confirmed that I would be in the apartment they needed somebody 18 and over by 12. If I can't be in there at 1.30 and I already confirm it's going to have a domino effect that only affects me it affects their workers it affects their scheduling. Well, we're sorry, Mr. Martinez. It's policy. You cannot be in before 1.30. Now, this policy-driven, corporate-run apartment complex had no concept of being people-oriented. They needed to make me feel like I was at home there, and I was getting the feeling that this really wasn't a very good match for me just then. I get a phone call right there in front of the leasing agent for that apartment complex. It's this 
one apartment I had seen that I really liked. It was $250 a month cheaper. Yes, it was smaller. I'm, I'm in here. It's about 500 square feet, but it's all I need, okay? And I went down there. I looked at it, and I told them, I said, I'll take it. And uh, then I called back to the other place and told them that I wasn't going to accept their apartment. I said, well, Mr. Martinez, you're going to lose your registration fee and your deposit. I says, well, if you feel you can spend that deposit in good conscience, you go ahead and do it. Okay, and then I called their corporate office and told them what had happened with CPS, what had happened about them not letting me move in. And then on top of that, uh, when I filled out the application, I wasn't able to see. I had to go uh, to an ophthalmologist. When I visited my doctor, he was concerned I had cataracts. And I do have beginning cataracts. And then also I have developed a floater in my left eye. And so they had dilated my eyes and I couldn't see the letters of the keyboard. And she was real upset that she had to help me fill out the application. And that went over and beyond what she was required to do. So I went ahead and got this other apartment. I'm all moved in now. And I'm ready to do another year of Bible study. I ask for your prayers. Uh, coming back from Santa Fe, New Mexico, my uh, check engine light on my car came on. And I took it to my good friend Carlos, who's a mechanic. He's a genius mechanic. And we worked on it three different times and could not solve the problem uh, cheaply. It's going to cost about $2,000 to fix. And here's the problem. It's not worth it. it the car's got too many miles. So as soon as you fix that, something else is going to go. So I'm, gonna, I'm in the market for another vehicle. <laughs> You know, no matter, as soon as you solve one problem, here comes two more. But listen, here's, here's the thing, if anybody wants to help me out with this. Uh, I, I've witnessed already to a number of people, the place I'm at here is incredible. I'm more in the city than I was out in the suburbs, okay? So I got all kind of people around me. Uh, I've already witnessed to a number of them. I had a girl actually walk up to me. You can walk here to the store and do anything. And I went over there and I said, it was so hot, 100 degrees. I'm going to get me a little thing of ice cream. And as I'm walking out of the store, this girl walks up to me with a little cellophane uh, cover that's used to cover a cigarette package. And in it, you could see through the cellophane and there was a little bug in it. And she said, here, this is for you. I said, well, what is that? She says, it's a little... A thing in there. I says, what do you mean? Says, I don't want that. She says, yes, that's you. What? That's you. That's not me. I'm <laughs> this is me. She, she says, do you believe in science? Let me tell you something. The, these young people here are so woke that they're co totally confused. They need the gospel. They were to share with another person the other day with some prolegomena. And that's one of the things I may teach more on. Because prolegomena is something that every Christian needs to know. We study doctrine and we study theology, but prolegomena answers the question as to why you believe what you believe. It's your presuppositions. Okay, for instance, let me give you a simple example. Do you believe there's a God? Well, different worldviews are going to answer that question differently. The atheist is going to say no. The pantheist is going to say, well, we're all God. God is all. In fact, this one girl said that. And I says, well, do you think the earth is God? She said, yes. I says, well then, but God stands outside his creation. He is not his creation. The creation had a cause. God had no cause. Okay? And so when you understand prolegomena, you can witness effectively the people, even without using the scripture. Just by using common sense question, where there's a creation, there must also be a creator. Okay, so I may teach some of that. I know I'm going to have an abundance of opportunities to share and witness to people here. I ask for your prayers. I can't do this without you. I felt your prayers this past month, especially getting in this place and how God prevented me from getting in the wrong place right at the last second. 
Okay, that's it for today. God bless you. I'm, I'm, this is kind of a test. I hope it works. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.